volcanoes and silence. In this programme, I hope to give you, the viewer, a comparison between two major volcanoes. Although seemingly similar, these two cases, due to their positioning in the globe and cultural differences within their individual countries, are very different. And so, without further ado, let's go to our first volcano, Mauna Loa. Hawaii is an island in the northern hemisphere, at the centre of the Pacific Ocean. Mauna Loa is in the middle of this island chain, and the volcano itself takes up over half the island. With a volume of nearly 18,000 cubic metres, it's the world's largest mountain and largest active shield volcano. The term shield volcano means that it's wider than it is tall and has steady slopes. Unlike the destructive cone-shaped fire-breathing dynamo that most people associate with volcanoes, it was created by magma forcing its way out of fissures from the Earth's surface. But it was very thin and slow, so it ran down the slopes instead of creating a nice tall volcano. Magma comes from hotspots in the Earth's mantle. Due to the movement of the specific plate, the volcanoes are going to be moved away from these hotspots, causing extinction. In recorded history, there have only been 33 eruptions from the volcano, and these are generally very fluid, and only ever attain walking pace speeds. The most recent eruption was on March 24, 1984. More common is the damage to infrastructure. Most of the roads, buildings and bridges are built on lava flows from over 200 years ago. This means they're susceptible to being hit by new lava flows. Despite the violence of some of these eruptions, only one person has ever been killed. In 1924, an onlooker to one of the eruptions was hit by a stone. In 1950, the most voluminous eruption ever seen at Mount Loa occurred. Lava flows went racing down towards the sea, destroying the village of Hukina Maka on the 2nd of June. A resident of Hukina Maka from the time gives his account of his experiences. What was it like? I remember it really clearly. I'd just gone to bed when I heard this awful roaring coming from the mountain. My friend had just knocked me up and I I got, I got up and he told me that I needed to run because the highway had been overrun by, by lava floors and I, so I grabbed my stuff and we, we, we made it to the car and went off and we managed to escape closely. We were, we were very close to being hit and uh, the lava flows completely destroyed my house and it destroyed all the houses in the village. And luckily no one died, um, but it was very close. So who helped you? Well, um, these people came along, but they, they said they couldn't get the helicopters in because um, of the, um, the, the ash in the air. And um, well, there's the Red Cross, and well, they, they rebuilt my house. Few, few months later, but it's not the same anymore. It's, it, I still smell the ash, the, the, the awful sounds of people screaming, but let's just thank, thank the Lord that no one died. That eruption was Van Lowe's most explosive ever. However, now we're going to skip to the other side of the globe, to a volcano in the Philippines, Mount Pinatubo. Pinatubo is part of a chain of volcanoes on the east of the island of Luzon. Mount Pinatubo is a stratovolcano caused by the subduction of the Eurasian plate underneath the Philippine plate along the Manila Trench. On July 16, 1990, an earthquake of magnitude 7.6 struck central Luzon. Volcanologists believe that this might have eventually caused the Pinatubo eruption. When Mount Pinatubo erupted, after 650 years of dormancy, it erupted, the second most powerful eruption of the century. 
Because of the imminent danger, Travolics, in association with the American Geographic Society, worked hard to evacuate all the people. However, they couldn't risk giving them misinformation and causing a scare. So the volcanologists were under strict pressures to get an accurate result quickly. This is a survivor from the Mount Pinatubo eruption. Survivor, what's your story? Uh, well, uh, I lived on the side of the mountain, and I, uh, I come from an American background, so I'm used to the kind of, um, you know, volcanoes and earthquakes and all that. And um, I, I, I felt this, these earthquakes happening on the side of Maryland. And, um, well, um, it was weird because at first I thought it was just another earthquake because they happen all the time, really. Um, but then it got worse. And, um, and then what I thought was just a normal mountain erupted into this huge volcanic eruption. And it was so scary. Um, I was living on my own, um, but uh, immediately my neighbors, they all came around and they were knocking on people's doors telling people to run, just, just, just get out. And people flown in, had flown in and they, they came and took us away. And um, luckily I'm still here today and I, I, now I live in America again so I, I can't live on Luzon anymore. So, yeah. That's life. So, do you know what the aid agencies did for everybody else who stayed on Luzon? Well, um, no, I, I, I don't really, because um, I, I managed to get away quite quickly, and I don't like to speak of it much anymore. In many natural ways, the MEDC was better off, for the eruption was less violent and less likely to kill. They were much better off in the fact that they knew about the volcano, but it's pretty much the view from the kitchen window. For the people of Luzon, Mount Pinatubo was inconspicuous, and not many knew of the peril that awaited them. They were less technologically advanced and unprepared for any sort of volcanic eruption. Earthquakes were more p common in the Philippines. All in all, the danger in the Philippines is far greater. However, there is concern of a great but rare hazard in Mauna. There are possibility of a sudden massive collapse of the volcano's flanks, deep faults downwards. This would mean devastation of towns, villages and also lives in grave danger. The government will have to look out for things like this in the future and take precautions. You've been watching Volcanoes with Kylie. Thank you and good night. Situated in the enormous northern hemisphere, in the middle of the Hawaiian plate. <laughs> The magma comes from hopscotch in the bird, 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 bird. That hopscotch is like low, it's low, it's low, it's is a stratovolcano caused by subduction of the Eurasian plate underneath the Paris Indian plate. Earthquakes are more common than the Philippines. The volcanologists believe this might have ultimately caused because of the imminent danger, the Volix, working in association with the American Northern Survey, managed to uh, 